Hello, everybody. It's Charles Vest, and I am providing you with Ninja Sales Secret Training number six and out of 20. And so today we're going to be talking about the sound in the bushes. And I know it it's kind of an interesting title because it doesn't really give you a hint as to what are you going to learn about sales in the topic or title, the sound in the bushes. But I promise you, you are going to learn in a very short amount of time how you can actually take advantage of something that happens in the human body that cannot be stopped. It is something that happens automatically. There's no way around it. It's kind of like where hypnosis kind of comes into play. You know, when, when you see folks up on stage, you know, during, during you know, one of those fun hypnosis sessions and, and you're like, why are they doing this? Don't they have control? Well, they do, but they don't because we are talking about the subconscious mind. And so as you have been following along with the training, you know that I am providing you just some quick, interesting, I hope, ninja sales secrets that you can utilize and practice utilizing in your sales, uh, in your sales environment. And you're going to really be, you're really going to be able to separate yourself from the rest of the pack. So here's the preface. Uh, you are a caveman, let's just say, 10 million years ago, and you're walking in the jungle and you have pretty much the same brain that we have today. Same brain parts, same brain, brain size. So as you're walking in the jungle, you may not have a, you may not have a phone. <laughs> you might just have a spear and a rock, but you're walking along in the jungle with the same mental capacity that we have pretty much today. And then all of a sudden you hear a sound in the bushes. What happens? What happens to you when you hear that sound of bushes? What if it was today and you were walking, you know, in the canyon somewhere near your house and you just out of nowhere heard a sound in the bushes? Well, let me tell you what happens. A lot of things happen. Your, uh, your brain, your reptilian brain, which is, uh, which is part of the, you know, the, the stem and the uh, the medulla and the, and the, what is it? It's, uh, I always say it wrong, so I always have to look at it here. The amygdala, <laughs> the medulla oblongata, all those pieces are old pieces of your brain that just react. They are not the thinking part of your frontal cortex. This is the, these are part of your brain that does the automatic things like breathe and, and keep your heart beating and, you know, all those things that happen all day long that you do not have any control over. Well, one of those things that happens is what's called fight or flight. And so while you're walking and uh, you hear a rustle in the bushes, immediately your eyesight gets keener. Isn't that interesting? Your hearing gets more clearer. Your heart starts beating faster. Your breathing starts to shorten. Your body gets in a mode to react to this sound in that amount of time, and it is uh, making one decision. Is this food or friendly or am I food or is this an enemy? You know, I mean, it's, it's this, it's one side or the other. And the simple way to look at it from our caveman perspective is, is this food or am I food? <laughs> is this a rabbit, which is dinner? or am I dinner to a saber tooth tiger, okay? These, this thing that happens in our brain is automatic. You cannot control it. You cannot just go, eh, I just got startled, eh. you know, I mean, you can, I guess. I mean, if you practice, practice, practice and are prepared for a sound in the bushes, but then if a plane crashes behind you, that's kind of like unexpected and now your brain goes, Shoo! everything comes into play. Well, that's interesting because what if you could actually make that happen in the sales process? What if you could, uh, you know, be that sound in the bushes during the sales process? It is something that happens often. We don't know what's happening to us because it is kind of a ninja sales secret, but I'm going to let you in 
on some of the ways that you can actually utilize the fight or flight response when selling. Okay, so think about it. What if when you said something to your customer, they automatically, without even knowing it, started paying attention more, their eyesight started getting keener, their hearing, you know, more, more, I don't know what the word is for hearing. I'm sure Teresa will share it with us what that means. <laughs> but I'm just going to call it keen. I don't know. It's not a depth. I know that. But anyway, all these senses start to come into play. And there are sentences that can elicit this response. Hmm. So if you knew those sentences, some of those sentences, and you knew the dynamics of it, if you knew the construction of these sentences, then you can wait for the right time to spring into action with this out of the blue sentence and elicit the fight or flight response. And then you can take advantage of it in a sort of, in, in a manner of speaking. So does that interest you? I hope it does. It's pretty interesting to me. So here's one of the, here's some of the sentences that I just wrote here this morning to kind of get you into that mood. What if you are talking and uh, having a conversation with somebody, maybe it's in the sales process or whatever, and you hear these words. The last thing I want to see is your business shut down by the feds. What? <laughs> huh? Right? The last thing I want to see is you going out of business because of having products that are inferior. Last thing I want to see is you being sued by your customer. Huh? Hmm? <laughs> you notice how some of the some how it just kind of gets right through everything and you're like, wait, what? Right? That's what you want the brain to do. Wait, what? Is this is this friendly or, or do or, or is this good for me? Here's a positive one, right? This is the food one. You know, I just found out that we only have 30 minutes to give you a 50% discount before that special is over. What? Wait, what? Like, there's a time and a place for those. I hope you're kind of getting this. There's a time and a place for those type of statements. And, uh, and in my industry, uh, here's one I was just thinking of. You know, patients are drinking hand sanitizer all the time in the hospital environment, and then they're suing the provider of the service. Wait, what? So that is called rustling the bushes. That is called a sound in the bushes. That those type of statements actually go right past the cortex and right in <laughs> to the amygdala and the uh, medulla amglata. I say it wrong every time, I'm sorry. But you get the point. We want to get to that old reptilian brain that just responds. Now, our job and your job, if there is a task, thank you, acute. Thank you, Teresa. She's so smart. You guys should hire her if you need any type of editing or proofreading because this girl knows all the words, <laughs> which I don't. Okay, so here's your job. And we're already halfway through with the training. This training is very short and sweet, just like all ninja trainings. And so you want to just kind of get a pencil and paper and write down some of this here. Here we go. The job of the salesperson, the job of the ninja salesperson is to identify what is food and identify what is the enemy to your customer. So here's a couple examples of what food is for your client or your customer. Food are more clients. That would be awesome if I can immediately see an opportunity to get more clients or more discounts or more marketing promotions or more credibility, instant credibility. And if that just came out of the blue, more exposure, positive exposure, of course, if that just came out of the blue, more publicity, those types of things. If you could come out of the blue, out of nowhere with a way for your customer to be, you know, I have a way for you to be seen on, well, how would you like to be seen on, on Fox News tonight? <gasps> Wait, what? <laughs> right, you get it? And then here's some things to identify as the possible enemy of your customer. Closure, right? Last thing I want to see is your business having to close because of your decisions. Fines, nobody wants those. Uh, bad publicity, as we talked about, bad ratings or bad reviews, 
We don't want you to get a bad review because, you know, of what just happened or what you are buying. Uh, unemployment for yourself. Last thing I want is to see you get fired. Wait, what? I, I can get fired? See, woof, right past that cortex and into the reptilian brain. And then there's also a place to put death in. Last thing I want to see is you guys are responsible for somebody actually dying from your products. <gasps> Wait, what? <laughs> Get it? So timing is very important. And the challenge is that we are not preparing our customer. Do not prepare your customer for this statement to come about. You can't soft sell it. You can't leave breadcrumbs along the way and then say this to the customer. It doesn't work that way. Then it's here in the cortex, in the frontal cortex. What you have to do is out of the blue, without any provocation, without any warning, you have a statement that you make and the customer gets startled out of wherever they were in their thought thinking process. And immediately they're thinking, wait, is this good or horribly bad? And it's your, your job to time it that way. But with anything this precise, you could also make a big mistake and say it at the wrong time. So yes, the last thing you want is to say this when the customer doesn't want to hear it and you lose all opportunity to sell anything else in the future because it looks like you're just trying to scare them. Wait, wait, Charles, am I, am I supposed to follow these instructions? See? How that works. So this is a little more of an advanced ninja secret, but some of them are. And I suggest that you practice with uh, people that don't have such huge consequences for you, like your children, for instance. You know, I uh, I remember I have twins. I do know that, uh, but I remember one summer when I had the twins and they were playing their video game. And, uh, and they were supposed to be doing their chores. And so I said, you know, hey, boys, I'm at the top of the stairs. Right? Hey, boys, boys, hey, Terrell, hey, Desmond. Those are my kids' names. And no response. Video game, video game. Then I said, the last thing I want is for you guys not to get any allowance this week. Oh, well. And all of a sudden, hey, wait, Dad, what? Hmm? Huh? <laughs> so... There's a time and a place for this. It has to come out of the blue and you should practice on your family, <laughs> on your friends, on your spouse, things like that. So even though this is a bit advanced, it is still short and sweet. This is only a 15 minute training. And, uh, and the, the, the secret is to remember, this is kind of a ninja thing. And so as a, you know, remember as a ninja, they are short quick, precise, in and out. So after you make your statement, right? After you make your statement, leave, get out, go, run, right? Let them think about what just happened. If you stick around for it, like for instance, with my, with my kids, I said, the last thing I want is for you guys not to make any allowance this week. Oh, well, I'm out the door. I'm back upstairs. They're like, wait, wait, dad, what? If you stick around, then they know that you're doing this for an effect. I'm going to repeat that. If you say the statement out of the blue, but then you stick around to hear or see their response, it could appear that you were doing it on purpose. A little bit tricky. It needs to be just something out of the blue. And then you leave. Let them chase you. Let them go, I don't want to die, right? Let them look for ninja secret number one, a hero. Let you become the hero immediately by saving them, by showing them. Here's the last example. And in, uh, in my business with uh, current business of sanitization services and, and you know, providing, providing a, a safe environment, you know, the last thing you want is to breed the germs of sick people in your restaurant or sick people in your facility. Yeah, what? Right. So with that, what we do is when I, you know, deodorize and spray and sanitize the place, 
I leave a sticker on the window and it's kind of like this shield. It looks like a shield, a shield of protection. And so when, when, when someone, you know, walks up to their door, they see this shield that this place has been protected, right? That kind of goes and, and means that you're not walking alone in the desert, you know, in the jungle. There's a shield of protection. It kind of reminds the customer, oh yeah, yeah, they are with me. I am not alone in this deal. Hmm. So there's a lot of ways to go deeper into this with some other ways to reinforce that you are the hero and that you are the solution to the challenge. You either are going to provide them with more food or you're going to protect them from that enemy. And, and you know, after they go through the initial startle, they go, well, wait, I, I, I got, I got Julie. Julie's going to protect me. Whew. Oh gosh, feel better already. See? So there it is. The lesson, the ninja cell secret number six, the sound in the bushes, how to be that sound in the bushes to actually uh, communicate to that reptilian brain. Remember this, once you have affected that brain, you only have a few seconds to be that hero, to provide that shield. So if the response is quick, then you might have to, when they go, wait, wait, don't go, you need to be ready to give that solution, right? That protection, be that hero right then and there quickly while they're in this state of fear, okay? Fight or flight, right? While they're in that state, this is when you can be very effective. All right, next week or next training. Oh, there is Mr. Corbin. Thank you, Mr. Corbin. I appreciate, appreciate you being here. One of the masters, my mentor, as a matter of fact. Thanks for being here. Next week, we're gonna talk about uh, how to be the ideal rep. You've heard of the ideal customer if you've been in business and sales for any length of time. But how do you become the ideal rep? Hmm. So that's what we're going to talk about next week. Number seven, thank you for being here. Thank you all for going through the trainings. And we look forward to uh, meeting up all in person at some point in the near future.